Hi, I'm Philip Greenspun. I'm a helicopter and airplane instrument instructor at East Coast Aero Club at Hanscom Field in Bedford, Massachusetts. I'd like to uh, talk to you today about the importance of briefing every instrument approach. This is something that uh, all Part 121 airline crews do on every flight before every approach. And uh, it also can be applied to increase safety when you're flying single pilot IFR. So uh, in the airline world, each pilot sets up the radios and the instruments and everything else needed for an approach. When both pilots are satisfied with their setup and the airplane's in a reasonably calm phase of the flight, one pilot briefs the approach while the other makes sure the avionics setup is consistent with the plate. What goes into an approach briefing? Uh, let me just give you an example first. We're going to use the uh, ILS runway 29 approach at uh, Bedford. That's uh, Bravo Echo Delta, Hanscom Field. And uh, you can uh, print out one of these plates and follow along, or I'll look at it on the screen right now. This will be the ILS runway 29er at Bedford, Hanscom Field. Chart date 12 February 2009. Uh, the localizer is 111.15, uh, and that's tuned and identified. Final approach course, 293, is set. Uh, we've listened to the ATIS as information, bravo. Uh, we're talking to approach, and we've got tower 18.5 on standby. Ground control, 21.7 on uh, COM2. We're going to be vectored to um, Jay-Z intersection, and uh, that'll be down to 1,800 feet which is where we'll intercept the glide slope. We'll go mist at 328 feet unless we see the approach lighting system, which is a Mauser, in which case we can descend to 228. That's 100 feet above the touchdown zone. Uh, if we do go mist, we're going to uh, go straight out to Bed's intersection. That'll be a climb to 2,000 feet and uh, a parallel entry into the hold. We're going to do all that using GPS guidance. To sequence the GPS onto the mist, we're going to uh, press the suspend button when it becomes available, and we're also going to press the CDI button to switch from the localizer to uh, GPS navigation. Let me talk about some of the things that I said and some of the things that I didn't say on this approach. First of all, the approach title. It's on the plate, it's the ILS or localizer runway 29er, but I just called it the ILS runway 29. I'm briefing the ILS-29, that's the approach that we're flying. If the glide slope flags out of service sometime during the approach, we go missed, we get delay vectors, we talk about it, we brief the localizer approach, and we come back in again. We don't try to convert this midstream into a localizer approach. Uh, so we are clear about which approach we're doing, even if the plate encompasses multiple approaches. Uh, another thing that uh, I mentioned was the touchdown zone elevation. That's only important if uh, we go all the way down to decision height and can't see the runway, but we can see the approach lighting system. So unless it were a really low day, I might not mention that at all. Uh, I talked about the um, missed approach after talking about decision height. So the briefing follows the sequence that we'd actually fly. And um, I mentioned that it would be a parallel entry into the hold. So we're not going to get to the hold and start arguing amongst ourselves or if we're single pilot, uh, debating within our own mind. Should it be teardrop? Should it be parallel? Should it be direct? We've already uh, puzzled it out on the plate in a much lower stress environment, uh, how we're going to enter that hold. <clears throat> if I'm flying with a co-pilot, it's particularly important to uh, read out the chart date. That way we're sure that we're both looking at the same charts. Um, some of the things that I left out, I left out the runway length. Um, it's not typical in Part 121 to be dispatched to an airport with a runway that's too short. It's 7,000 feet. It's not very interesting. <clears throat> it says radar required. Uh, that's the air traffic control system's radar. Uh, they haven't noticed, notified us that the radar is out of service. So uh, it's not worth mentioning. Had we been doing this approach on our own or in mountainous terrain, I would have mentioned the minimum sector altitude. But because we're getting radar vectors in a fairly flat region of the country, I uh, didn't think it was pertinent. So 
Uh, that's the ILS 29er at Bedford.